Dork back again, and boy, do I have a problem today. I need y'all's help. I need to start utilizing the Google Gemini large language model. So I come into my handy dandy ClickSense load editor, and I go to my analytic sources, and I start scrolling down, and lo and behold, there is no Google Gemini connector that I could use as a server-side extension. So I guess I folded my hands and just told my boss I couldn't do it. No, no, my boss says, no, that's not the answer. You don't just say, no, I can't do it. And the wonderful thing that I wanna share with you is that it can be done, even though the connector doesn't already exist. Now, what I did end up doing was try to utilize a REST connector because the Google Gemini does offer a REST connector. And I was able to do that if I wanted to use that in a load, but then that wouldn't work if I did it inside my screen. So I created an application automation that could call the REST connector, and then I put a button that would call it. But that's not quite the same as being able to utilize it inside of charts or tables where you've got multiple rows of data that you may want did not quite give me the flexibility I wanted. So I wanted to share how you can utilize the generic advanced analytics connector. Now I want to let you know, when you come into this, it's going to ask for a URL and some information. And what I'm making this video for is to show you that you can't call the Google Gemini connector directly through here. And I'm going to show you why in a second. So just assume that I know what I'm talking about, that it cannot be called from here, but you're not going to understand what I mean by it until I show you how the advanced analytic connector works. So what I did was I created a application automation. Very simple. If you just create a brand new one and you have a start block, make it be triggered and it's going to give you the information you would need for a post command. And so it's going to show me the URL I need, and it's going to tell me I need to use this X execution token in the header. Obviously, on your end, you would do this yourself. Just because I'm testing, all I'm going to do is say, yay, it works. So what I'm going to hopefully do is pass some data as a server-side extension through the advanced analytics connector, and hopefully I get a response back of, yay, it works. So all I had to do was go in and I copied the URL. I put in this X execution token. I'm going to give you a link um, in the description for the video that's going to show you a document that explains all these things. But I want to walk you down through. Um, there's not a whole lot else you need to do. You do not want to check this box for load all available fields. You need to give it a table name. And this could be anything you want literally anything you want. So I would call it any name you want. The one thing that you do need to do is input these um, fields for response. So just, hey, name is response, value is response. Don't really care what values you necessarily use. And for the way I'm going to test initially, I want to pass this question number as an association field so that it knows, hey, how do I tie this value back do not check this box. You could just use any name you want for the connector, um, but you would obviously go through and do a test, right? Then you can save that connector. I've got some dummy data in here. This dummy data is really simple. It's a question number and it's a prompt. Yay! Really complicated data set there. What I'm going to do is say, I like to call that thing. So I want to say, I want to select data. As soon as I start typing data as the table name that it's going to come from, hey, there's my any name you want as the return table. Notice that it immediately shows me, hey, there's two columns here. The question is the primary key for the response. And then I want to get the response. That's not a primary key. And it gives me the script code. Woohoo! I loaded the script code um, into here. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this thing. And it's going to pass one row of data. And I can see it gets one row back. If I wanted to go ahead and look at my data model, I could see from this data model, I've got my question table and I got my answers, anything you want. 
And if I come down to here, yay, it works. I've got the response that I put in my output. So the key thing is here, I can pass in what I need and I get an output. Now, woo, but I needed to pass it a question. I actually wanted to use that question in some way and I really didn't there. So I could come over here and instead of this output for yay, it works, I can say, here is what you asked. And again, I'm not trying to do any fancy things. I'm just gonna do this. If I click this down arrow, I then can see, hey, you get the output from start. Once you've done this once, then you can see what comes in the output. I can click on prompt, or I can also go to toggle view mode and see this just comes in a basic body block. Pure JSON, simple body, with field names and the values as a pair. That's all it is. And so I'm going to untoggle this and say I want to return that prompt. And it says, hey, this could be an array. It's just a pure JSON body block. Do you want the first one? Do you want them all? Blah, 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 blah. Do you want one, you know, indexed? I'm just going to take the first one because all I'm ever going to do is pass one thing at a time here. And so I'm going to pick that first one and say I want to select it. And so now my output, instead of yay, it works, is supposed to be here's what you asked. And it's going to, it's going to take the starting body that gets passed in and pass me back that prompt. Notice, I didn't create parameters. Usually when I've done videos about automation, you've come in here and you see me use inputs and variables and things. The body that gets passed into that post command just goes in as body. That's it. I don't have to identify parameters. And so now if I come back, to, let me go ahead and do a, a reload of my data again. I sent one row, I get one row back. And if I go over to my data model viewer and take a look, hey, I passed question one. And instead of yay, it works, I get here is what you asked. Not very helpful, but the point is to show you how the fields get passed to the automation and they just go in a body block. There's nothing for you to find. So you're free to do whatever you want. So maybe on my page, I want to use this as an eval expression. So I've just got a text block here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, hey, tell me a dad joke as, well, you notice when I, when I use this, nothing comes back. Why do you think that is? Well, because it was expecting the actual field name prompt. It was not expecting a value prompt to use. However, now I can easily change this. So I can come out of here and just go ahead and change this now. Even though I haven't tested this yet to pass it, I'm going to change that name to be prompt to use expecting. If I pass this to the body, it will be there for me to output. And notice I also pass another field. The way that the advanced analytics connector works for the eval script is I need my connection information and then I can pass as many fields as I want just as pairs. And so I'm going to show you in a second how we can use an actual field or I can give it these names as I want to, whatever I want. And then within my automation, I can use one, two, three, five of these fields as I need to. So I'm going to change this to tell me a funny dad joke is a prompt simply so that it will rerun it because it will keep it cached. If the prompt hasn't changed, it's not going to redo this expression. So I'm going to press apply here and hopefully it comes back. And sure enough, here is what you asked. Tell me a funny dad joke. Now I can use this right in a table if I want to. So I'm just going to throw a table object on my screen and I'm going to add my question number and I'm going to add my prompt and I'm going to throw in this measure. And so I'm going to create a measure here that's going to be looking like this where I'm going to pass it in my actual field name. Now, Remember, 
it's going to go in the body with the field name I alias it as. So if I want it to just be called prompt, I could change this again back to prompt, or I can say, ooh, my internal field name, let's alias that as prompt to use as well. And so in your world, you're going to define what these field names are going to be. You're not going to be playing games back and forth like I am. I wanted to show you all the options that you could be using for these things. So again, I'm going to pass it and I'm going to pass the actual value from the cell that has the prompt in it for me. And I press OK and look at that. It comes back with what can you tell me? And then hey, here's the question you asked about. What can you tell me about click? Now, the beautiful thing is I can pass in as many as I want um, to the starting block because it's a body. Now, here's why the Google Gemini did not work as an advanced analytics connector. If I go to Postman, and I'm going to bring this up for you here, um, you'll notice here's my generative AI. Here's what I'm calling. You just It's a simple URL. Right? Post. Yay! That's what we're using for the advanced automation connector. It should work. I pass in a key. Yay! Um, but, mm, man, this is not a simple JSON body. This is a contents that contains parts, that contains text as the body. And so that did not work well for me because the advanced automation connector automatically simply passes it out as a body because that's what most URLs for LLMs take is something simple like that. But imagine now that I wanted to call this from within my automation, which is exactly what I did. This is simple, right? Now all I need to do is change. Here's the question that I'm really going to pass in, right? And I could take this, take that URL, take that and all I'd have to do is come to this basic building block here for call URL where I put that URL in there I change it to be a post method and coming down here where it's params I change it to raw input so it's a JSON block and I simply put that exact JSON block from the Google Gemini documentation guess what I can have if I'm going to do this Instead of passing, here's what you asked back, I could use that URL, what it returns, and just pass it back, and voila. I just created, in a matter of minutes, a Google Gemini advanced analytics connector that could be used as a server-side extension. I can have it do an input field for a variable, so that instead of just saying, hey, I want you to pass this, I can say dollar sign expand from my variable. I can ask it any question I want, and the results get automatically returned to me. If I did have questions that I had in a table, I could also use it down inside of there where I pass the questions. And all it does is the body comes to it. It knows, here's the question you want to ask. If I want to pass it data, I can pass a separate field as data if I want to and so then down here all I would have to do is say hey here's here's the question I have and please answer that question based on this data and pass in the data as well so very super simple the reason uh, why is that it just creates just the body but the beautiful thing is you can test it understand how that advanced analytics connector works see what you're passing capture that information just the way you do things with postman where you want to see hey what, what do i got to pass it how's it getting passed what, what am i coming back with hope that you have a great day